In this video, I am going to show you a number of dissected AviQ and Allergect devices and give you my best guess of how the device works. So to begin, this is an unused device, and I'm going to remove the um, outer case only briefly because it talks to you when we do, but I just want to show you um, the activation mechanism in an unused device. If you are ready to use Pull off red safety guard. So we're going to pull off the safety guard. To inject, place black end against outer thigh. And what I want to show you, it's difficult to see, but inside seconds. here there is um, a little black to piece inject, of plastic. Place black end against outer thigh. And that plastic then pushes against little white pieces of plastic. For five seconds. And I can show you that better on this device. I'll pull this apart. So these two pieces here press against the bottom piece of this plastic here, and we're going to do that and activate this device. Turns out that's quite difficult to do. Glad I didn't stick myself with that. Um, shows you not a good thing to be trying at home. Uh, next, we're going to look at the, this device, and I have sawed off the top end here, and you can see it's made up of three compartments. Uh, one I have currently empty. We'll look at an intact one of that, and the second one and the um, electronics compartment. Here I've sawed this one off just a little bit differently so that the, there's still a covered um, section here, which is the electronics section. And the first thing we're going to do is remove that section. This contains a speaker, a um, circuit board, and the batteries. The only connection between this area and the next area is this little window, and I think that there is a sensor here that can sense whether or not uh, what kind of position the needle is in that tells you the um, this section whether or not the device has been used. Everything else about this section is um, self-contained, um, other than this little piece comes up as the device fires, which may also um, give an indication of uh, that the device is being used and trigger the beginning of counting. This far section is what contains the spring. The top on the top of this section is this little canister and when it's new this would be down contained within the device so I can't push it that far down anymore. When you pull it out you can see there's the spring. These were the two little prongs that were sitting holding the spring inactivated that when pushed up activated the spring. It pushed this whole section up, which then pushed this short needle into the canister, releasing gas, which I presume is CO2. There's a little side port in this needle which allows the gas to escape. And because this is quite a sealed compartment. The gas can't escape down into this compartment. I'm going to show you on another um, sawed off top. You can see this fits up on the top like this. And it's quite difficult to see. It took me quite a while to find it. But there is a teeny tiny little hole that goes from this compartment over to this compartment. I doubt you can see it. It's down at the bottom there. And that allows the gas from here to escape over into this compartment. Now right now this looks like there's nowhere for the gas to go, but when this device, um, and, what, so, and that's true, and in an unused device what it will do is first press the needle out, and you can see the needle come out the other end, and then after it presses the needle out it will press the, um, the plunger of the syringe to push the syringe down to eject the medicine. 
and then that will um, release this little valve which will then allow the gas to come back up into the top part of this compartment and then the spring in this section will release it and we'll look at that one more time with the device open so I'm just going to push all those things out So in a resting device, this you can see there's some residual epinephrine in here, but in a resting device, uh, this um, plunger would be higher up like this, and it'll be sitting like this, and the spring is here like this, and when that pressure from that CO2 comes, the first thing it will do is, remember there's pressure against it here, and I suspect there's probably some kind of um, seal here that takes some pressure to release. So I think the first thing that happens is it pushes down until it can't push it anymore with, so that it pushes the needle out. And then the additional pressure pushes this little piece of plastic down inside and ejects the appropriate amount of medicine. And then when it gets all the way down, it pokes a little hole here, releases this little stopper valve that's been blocking this off, and then the gas can then release and come up into this top section. And that means there's a lot less pressure pushing it to hold the needle out, and it's now not overcome by the spring, so the spring action can then push the needle back up into the device. Ah. And I think that's everything I have to show you.